Hi, this is your host Sandeep Bhartia. Today we have with us Yuvi Kao, CF Open Source Product Lead at VMware and Paul Warren, Product Manager of CF for Kids at VMware. What was the, the drive behind CF for Kids? Yeah, um, well, well the, the drive behind CF for Kids is really about bringing um, Cloud Foundry as a developer experience to Kubernetes, but, but kind of doing that thoughtfully um, looking at how can we um, take advantage of other projects in the ecosystem and um, that are, uh, you know, up and coming or are proven already, and how can we uh, adopt that and, and make that experience more native? Um, so really bringing the Cloud Foundry developer experience, but also integrating with um, many of the newer projects as well. And one auto, uh, I think, is a Huge milestone for us. Perfect. Uh, since Paul, you are the product manager, you know, of CF for Kids. Uh, talk about some of the this uh, for the especially the 1.0 release. Some of the key highlights, key features of this release. I, you know, I think the problem we're trying to solve here is uh, it, it to bring the Cloud Foundry developer experience to Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is great. Um, you know, it makes what was once very difficult now very possible. Uh, in essence, uh, it, it's an entire ecosystem of tools, you know, networking, load balancing, object storage, compute, and memory allocation and scheduling, uh, all working in concert to make to make that difficult possible. But uh, operating and using this set of interconnected tools, uh, particularly in production settings, is hard. And much as we would like uh, like it, there is no such thing as a self-tuning, self-healing, self-administering Kubernetes cluster. So Cloud Foundry helps with that, right? Uh, by bringing to the developers the famous CF push experience. So no more YAML for them, no more uh, complicated Kubernetes resources like replica sets, services, load balancers, DNS. Um, it, it's easy, uh, uh, as easy as CF push. Um, and for platform operators, uh, we think that this represents, you know, the entire Cloud Foundry community's learnings, knowledge, and best practice on how to run a, a multi-tenant Kubernetes cluster for, for your teams of developers. And because it's open source uh, and we release frequently, you know, as we learn uh, how to do that better and better, um, the, the platform operators uh, gain from that almost immediately. One thing that I want to do, I mean, we have already, this is not even a topic at this point, but I just want to reiterate is that uh, it's, it's never about Cloud Foundry versus Kubernetes. It's about Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. So how is, you know, CF for Kate not only further pushing that, you know, uh, at the same time, how it's also helping? There are a lot of users who have investment in Cloud Foundry already, and, and some of them are also moving to Kubernetes. At the same time, there are a lot of people who are on Kubernetes, you know, but they can also leverage Cloud Foundry. So can you talk about the, the kind of bridge that you're trying to build here, if I'm right about calling it a kind of bridge. So you're right. It, it is about Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. Um, really, we're trying to, um, you know, uh, Kubernetes is, is now ubiquitous in the, syst in, in the ecosystem and, and at a lot of companies out there. It's a lot easier to, to get access to a cluster, but you still have to wire quite a bit up together to get um, from your, your application code um, to uh, running production environment. And so I think with, with uh, Cloud Foundry, being able to layer on top of that very quickly with a much smaller footprint than ever before, um, that uh, it, it, it's very much a Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. You can uh, have both very uh, the, the developer experience um, while taking advantage of the, the ubiquity, ubiquity of, of uh, the Kubernetes um, uh, ecosystem, clusters available in the cloud, on-prem. Everyone's trying to provide that layer. And I think um, the developer experience is the, is the real gap. Um, you know, people don't want to have to tie together five, six, ten different tools and have to um, curate that. Or, or maybe they do, but um, that, that takes quite a lot of expertise um, to be able to curate all of those things together and make sure they're up to date. And um, if the new thing comes out, um, being able to, to uh, bring that new thing in, into the ecosystem. And if you're focused on 
um, building applications, then, then you want to just focus on uh, building applications, really. And um, the CF uh, really provides the best experience, in my opinion, for taking your application code and getting it to running and not worrying too much about um, the things in between. Um, and as for, for folks who are going from, who, who already know and love Cloud Foundry as it is, um, I think this really provides a, a path forward into the future for, for them. Um, as uh, more investments are made into Kubernetes and the surrounding ecosystem, this is allowing them a path to still maintain um, the Cloud Foundry developer experience as, uh, you know, um, those things will just get easier to get at um, com as compared to VMs and, and the, the technologies and integrations will, will continue to mature. So I think this is really a, a bet into the future as well for them um, to be able to ha still have the Cloud Foundry experience on top of this new infrastructure. Paul, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I, th I think... Uh, from my perspective, what I'd add to that is uh, touching on a point I made earlier. You know, running uh, a multi-tenant Kubernetes cluster is hard, and, and one of the reasons why that's hard is because actually there's a lot of decisions you have to make. So Kubernetes just doesn't come uh, set up for that out of the box. Uh, so you need to think about your networking, and you need to think about your logging, and you need to think about your metrics. Uh, and so as well as just bringing the developer experience, uh, we're also bringing um, a set of uh, decisions uh, ready made for you. So we've decided to, to use, uh, you know, certain Istio uh, projects and Envoy from the from the CNCF uh, community. Uh, we've decided to use FluentD. We've decided to use Prometheus. Uh, and, and, and we set those up for you and, and they're up and running. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. Can you talk about the release cadence because Kubernetes moves it at its own pace uh, and as you plan to keep you know supporting the new releases talk about it and also if since it may be the same question about your roadmap as well yeah so uh, we we're typically looking to release on a fairly frequent uh, cadence uh, somewhere between two uh, every two weeks to uh, to a month um, so uh, fairly frequent um, and uh, some of those we do anticipate will be major releases, but we're working very hard in this release of this distribution of Cloud Foundry to make that upgrade path uh, very, very easy. So we're putting a lot of effort uh, in behind the scenes in and in our tooling um, and our uh, delivery pipelines to uh, to ensure that that upgrade um, uh, path is always always there and uh, platform operators really can come with us on the journey. What is the difference uh, between, you know, CF for kids versus, you know, uh, other cloud funded distributions? Uh, because it's kind of become not that crowded, but still a space. Yeah, I, I can take a, a, a shot at that. So, um, so I guess we, we need to differentiate in a couple of different directions. Uh, so, so CF for kids is different from our uh, op original uh, open source product called CF Deployment. So CF Deployment uh, installs the Cloud Foundry onto uh, a set of VMs, whereas, as we've been discussing here, CF for Kates uh, installs um, uh, the, the platform onto Kubernetes, and it also schedules the, the applications that the developer pushes onto that same uh, cluster. Um, so that's the first distinction to make. Uh, the second distinction to make is also within the foundation, there is a, a, a separate product called kubectf, and that also installs Cloud Foundry on a Kubernetes cluster, but it goes about it in a fundamentally different way. So uh, their architecture is uh, essentially to take CF deployment that usually runs on, on VMs and, uh, and to make it run on Kubernetes. So you're really getting um, uh, the 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 uh, components that are originally architected to run on VMs running on the Kubernetes cluster, but you get a very um, the experience is is is, is identical. Uh, with CF for Kates, we rearchitected, uh, we you know containerized the, the the system components or completely rearchitected them. So the whole thing is completely Kubernetes native, um, and uh, um, and, um, and and therefore. Um, uh, we feel we will be able to take better advantage of, of uh, the facilities that Kubernetes provides us uh, and be able to move quicker moving forwards. Um, 
Uh, but that is uh, a, a little bit at the expense of, of some subtle changes in behavior here and there. So so we still have the, the famous CF push and it works, uh, uh, but um, you know, there will be some subtle changes in, in perhaps uh, how it's, uh, uh, what's the right word, uh, how it reasons about your source code. Um, and so you might have to make some uh, small adaptions here and there, um, but nothing big uh, uh, to, to, to make your app pushable on the, on the new platform. But, it, you know, we do that because we feel that being Kubernetes native uh, is, 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 is going to serve uh, our users uh, the best moving forwards. Yeah, I agree in terms of the, the tooling, um, the operator tooling will be much more common. Um, there'll be less layers of indirection. Um, because we're, we're using more of the common technologies underneath. And um, really the projects I hope will converge over time. Um, and, but but in, in the near term, they're, they're just very different approaches to each other. Uh, can you also talk about what are the resources available there for those who want to try it out? And yes, to, to add what uh, you were saying, we'd like to emphasize that um, we have really tried very hard uh, with this distribution of, of Kubernetes uh, to make it really, really easy for you to get up and running. So it, it, essentially there's a batteries included version uh, and on the website cf-4-kates.io, uh, there's a getting started guide that will get you from nothing to uh, pushing uh, your own app with the famous CF push experience uh, in, in under 30 minutes. Uh, so there really is no need, uh, no reason not to give it a go. Uh, please give it a try. Uh, please give us your feedback um, it, or either on Slack, on the Cloud Foundry workspace, uh, CF for Kates, um, uh, or via issues and um, PRs to the to the to the GitHub repo. Awesome, Yuri, uh, Paul, thank you so much for taking time out today from your schedule and talk about this release. And I look forward to talk to you again because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things going on uh, in this project. So once again, thank you.